tricky one. Uh, I mean, you've got some great players in there, two or three, anyway, three, maybe four. But I think that before the first one this year, they hadn't played for three months. That can be good, you know, not having competitive golf. It's going to be difficult for them, especially now, you know, back in with all their old mates playing huge crowds, which I don't think they've been having in live golf. So it's it's one we'll just have to let unfold and see what happens. But I don't I don't fancy their chances to be honest. Well, they knew what was happening when they signed up. I think it was perfectly illustrated with uh, uh, the the captain or the ex captain uh, Stenson. I believe they were told if you sign for Live, you you will not be involved in the Ryder Cup. And he went ahead and signed his uh, saw that, and then and then signed for them. So he lost his captaincy. So if they take the captain out, I can't see any of the other Live players getting in. But you know, you know, you know, we've we've lost three, I think, incredible captains in Westwood, Garcia, and Poulter. I think they would have been unbelievable captains in the years to come. Whether they would have made the team this year is slightly debatable. So I don't know how the captain's thinking about who he's going to pick or whatever, but I'm sure that the live players are not going to get picked. Not certain. I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i not involved in any way, shape or form. Uh, so I don't really know what's going to happen there, but uh, it doesn't look good for him, to be honest. Uh, I, I haven't really watched it. I think I've maybe watched 20 minutes of it, but it's, it's not for me. It just doesn't rub well with me. It's, you know, the, the PGA Tour was magnificent, the European Tour, now the DP World Tour. Then you've got the Asian Tour, the South African Tour, the Austral, Australian Tour. I mean, there was plenty of tours. This is, I guess they were just trying to do something totally different. You know, when you've got the 16th at uh, Arizona, that bar three, you know, that, that's extraordinary what goes on there. But that's one hole in the whole year. You know, to think about, uh, I'm not saying they do the same as that in live, but they're trying to do different things, music playing and all this stuff going on, shotgun starts. I don't know. I don't know if it'll, it'll last or not. The, you know, the, the Saudis, uh, they're, not, they're not stupid people. They're not doing it for fun. I mean, they're doing it to make money. Uh, it, in the long run, by selling their teams, or I don't know how they, 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 they want to do it, but I believe that's one of the ways. I think it's just best to let it unfold and see what happens. You know, for players that are dwindling in years, and you're offered that vast amount of money to go and so see out your career on the live tour, I, I, I probably would have jumped out of myself. Uh, but for these young superstars, you know, the Justin Thomases and Morikawa, there, there, there's so many of them uh, that have said no because the, the tour is a tour. You know, the U.S. tour has is, is been the king since the day I've started playing golf. It was where you all wanted to get to and play. You've never heard of a player leave an American tour until this started, and it's maybe been done the wrong way, I don't know. Being captain uh, by a million miles, that was uh, extremely special. Playing in it is obviously uh, very meaningful and, and exciting and rewarding. But to be the captain, win or lose, is uh, was beyond belief, to be honest. Speeches. There's nothing bothered me. Every other aspect of it, picking the clothing, pair, putting the teams out was great being friends with them, talking to them. Every aspect about the Ryder Cup were, was uh, I looked forward to, but the, the, the opening and closing ceremonies terrified me. I got some great help uh, from a guy called David Purdy, who I heard speaking at the Sunningdale Centenary Dinner, and he was magnificent, a Scotsman. And as soon as he finished, I, I went up and introduced myself, and he says, yes, I'm going to know who you are. That I, I said, well, I want you to help me with the Ryder Cup. And he looked at me and says, but Sam, I'm an amateur. <laughs> I said, don't want you to play. But uh, he was magnificent in helping me. Just little things, 
Uh, we spent I spent a lot of time with them in the years building up, but uh, that was a huge help. Winning the well, captain of the Ryder Cup, but as player uh, winning the aforementioned Australian PGA on uh, Royal Melbourne, which is an incredible golf course. I've been very lucky to. I mean, I won in Royal Melbourne, the one, uh, the poor Marnock, the Irish Open, and won twice at St Andrews, the Dunhill Cup, and once with my, with my son was very special. Uh, well, that would be, I, well, yeah, my most embarrassing moment, yeah. Uh, the Lancum event, uh, mid 80s. I traveled with David Ferrity for about 10 years, and this was during my time of traveling with him. And uh, when you're traveling with someone, you become very close and whoever finishes the round first will wait and the other one finishes and then go back to the hotel or the airport for Sunday night or whatever. Uh, so we've arrived, arrived at the Lancome and uh, one of our favorite events, it was just a magnificent course in Nome La Retech, uh, in Versailles. And uh, every year they give a, a, a Rolex watch for the low round of the week. But we find out when we get there that this year it was going to be given to us by Isabella Rossellini, daughter of uh, Ingrid Bergman, voted the most beautiful woman in the world, possibly that year. So we were all pretty excited about that. And of course, round two, years truly, I shot 63. And by Sunday night, it was the low round of the week. I didn't play very well the other three rounds. Uh, so I finished with 30, but, but the only stipulation was that you would attend the prize giving. So not a problem. So I'm in the bar with 30, I've had a couple of glasses of wine, I'm absolutely fine, I'm still in my golf gear, uh, light grey trousers and uh, navy blue shirt, as was mine. Worn for a bit of Scottish luck with a blue shirt, so it's now 6.30, the prize game is about to start, so I head out and up to uh, around the putting green, I've got a beautiful big lawn up there and this is where the prize giving was. Uh, and all the press up there, the dignitaries, the sponsors, uh, cameras everywhere and of course the beautiful Isabella Rossellini. So I'm sitting down there, happy as Larry. The sun's beautiful, it's perfect conditions. I'm happy as. And I'm just looking about, and I look down to the right, and I see him. Fairty. Hey, what the hell's he doing here? He shouldn't be here. And he's got this dirty big shitty grin in his face. And he's about 40 yards from me. And he's getting closer, and I look away again. And then I look back, and now he's, he's 10 yards away. And I look up at him, and he's just this huge grin in his face. And he brings from behind his back a pint of water and he throws it shh, all over my crotch. And I've gone, what the fuck? And I've looked up and he's gone. Like I ran the sinking ship, running away, laughing like a bloody hyena. And I'm looking down at my trousers and it's ridiculous. My whole crotch is just saturated. And within 30 seconds, the announcement and the lower round of the week, Sam Torrance, uh, Sam, please come up and collect your award from the beautiful Isabella Rossellini. So I had to get out and walk 40 yards across these beautiful lawns towards the most beautiful woman in the world with a sodden crotch. And I mean, I got there and I, I told the beautiful lady immediately what my best friend had just done to me and she had a wee giggle. So he kind of got away with it with her, but he didn't get away with it with me. Still haven't had revenge yet, but I will come up with something before we pass. Uh, between the ears. Uh, no question. I was fortunate enough to play with Tom Watson a number of times. Great man. And uh, I think it was Burt Bill we were playing and I asked them, what, you know, you've won everything in golf. What, what motivates you? What? And he says, at a young age, I learned how to win. And he didn't really understand it at the time, but I, I now know exactly what he meant. And, and winning is uh, is what it's all about. You know, these guys have won 80 tournaments, heavy. Uh, Sam Snead, Nicholas, Woods. You know, it's just something that they love doing. And they, that's, that's what it's all about, really. And that, that, that comes from, from good thinking, from not doing the wrong thing at the right time or doing the right thing. You know, when things are, are, are in a bad position or whatever, uh, just don't do the stupid thing, do the, the right thing. And they, they seem to be able to do that time after time, the greats. Well, that's what you dream for. 
that's what you dream for and that's what you work for. Everyone will have an idol. Jack Nicholas was mine. I actually, I once said to him, Jack, do you mind if I give you a compliment? And he veers a wee bit of a reprobate and he looked at me and says, yeah, go on. I says, in the 400 majors that I won in my dreams, you were runner-up every time. <laughs>